February the 8th, 2019. Guys, you're looking at a comet that was discovered in just this past December. And this particular image was last night, and it came from Austria, and it was taken by Michael Yeager. Now, it's called Comet Awamoto because of the man that first discovered it back in December. And they're saying it's a visitor from the Kuiper Belt. Very interesting. Again, today's the 8th, so on February the 12th and the 13th, guys, in four days, it's going to make its close approach to Earth. It's already close, and these images are uh, proof of that. But it will be a little closer, but they're already saying with backyard telescopes you can get some pretty good pictures. If you've got, if you, of course, if you're not under cloud cover. And they're calling the comet a rare visitor because the last time, as they project backwards, looking at the data arc span that they've collected since December, they have estimated 1,371 years ago it orbited and made a close approach to our sun like this, and it goes out into the Kuiper belt. But this is, uh, again, filmed last night of the green comet, and if you're looking, look in the constellation Virgo. That's the brighter stars that you see here. Also, we'll take a look at uh, the JPL models and kind of get an idea of why it's um, the data arc span is letting them look back and simulate an orbit because of the arc of what the data that they've had since December when it was um, a first discovered. Now, the only thing, and of course, they know that this could happen, but they have to use the data they have. The only thing that would change it say coming into our inner solar system if it were to go by one close enough to a planet you could have a slight change in trajectory just because of gravitational tugs it would take a close approach but the sun does it every time it comes into the inner solar system because of the gravity of the sun and it speeds up through its process as the closer it gets these comets can come in at a million miles a day but as they approach inside the orbit of mars they can and get close to the sun, they can speed up to 11 million miles per day. It's an electric universe, and they're one charge, and the sun is the opposite charge. But this one not, does not appear to be uh, in danger of hitting any planets or the sun, but it should be a great uh, catch for astronomers. If you've got a telescoping lens on your cameras, uh, take, a, take pictures of it, guys. Uh, you can put the picture on our actually into the chat at bpheadlinenews.com when you see these events or you've got any kind of pictures you want to share like this you can do it there they're saying because it goes beyond the copper belt it comes from the realm of extreme trans neptunium uh, objects et and o's more than five times as far from the sun as pluto this means it could be a relative of other strange et and o's such as sedna or 2012 VP113, or 2015 TGB387 called Goblin. Now they classify this as what's called an unrecorded comet. In other words, simply because of the data arc span, they put it in like that because it has never been recorded in history that we know of. Sometimes they will see one, then they may go back and look at ancient records or old records from astronomers from around the world. And they may can tie it into a certain event. But anyway, it's listed as unrecorded, and they're saying it uh, according to the data arc span, it was around 648 AD. For those that are interested and want to do some research, and is next, uh, and it won't reappear until 3390 AD. And that means if any of us want to see it, it's the last time you will be able to do it in a physical body. Now, this is the Jet Propulsion Laboratory's model of the comet. Again, these are ARC data spans. Notice I have the timestamp bottom left at today's date. Now, remember the image of the green comet we were just uh, looking at was last night on the 7th and then from Austria, Northern Hemisphere. We're going to take a look at this. You can see the very uh, long arc that's taking 1,371 years because uh, look at where New, uh, Neptune is. As we let's pull this into the uh, inner solar system right here on today's date. 
kind of turn it around earth is in the blue orbit uh, you, venus mercury and mars and as i pull it up notice uh you've got uh, two different colors in the orbit line it's uh, kind of a gray dimmer white where it's coming below the inner solar system and then it gets into a brighter white as it exits the ecliptic between uh, that's the kind of the average none of the planets have the exact ecliptic in their orbits you notice mercury's tilted things like that but what we're calling the ecliptic it's a few days from reaching that midpoint but uh, we're already getting good photographs of it because of the tilt of the planet now let's step it forward again we're on the eighth notice in the bottom left we'll go to the ninth tenth you can see comet Yamoto is rising the best date is going to be on the 12th here and what's happening now it's now entered above the ecliptic of earth and mars and starting to rise uh, th uh, into the upper part of our inner solar system and then exit back out for 1371 years so many of us again won't see it uh, like we will now anyway guys as that happens again in the constellation virgo and we step this thing forward each day you're going into the 13th here you're going to go into the 14th and i'm just going to advance it out so it's not only moving upward but it is getting further away from our planet notice earth is continuing its orbit and they're actually kind of going in different directions here so again from now probably your 12th and 13th is your close approach but you probably can get some pictures beyond that depending on the strength of your telescope so if you got again telescope good um, uh, camera with telescopic lens check out Virgo we'll get more information on it uh, once in a lifetime event guys it's a heads up be safe